In this video, I am going to discuss price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of supply measures how suppliers react to a change in price. Along the vertical axis is price. Along the horizontal axis, quantity per unit of time is plotted. And we have the standard supply curve. At each point on the supply curve, there's a price and associated quantity. If price rises, what we find is if prices go up from P1 to P2, then quantity increases from Q1 to Q2. So quantity supplied increases that amount, the green line I just drew in. I'm going to move that out of the way, the green line, and now I'm going to make supply slightly more inelastic. At the exact same price, P2, there is less quantity supplied, which is I label as Q2I for I for inelastic. Now when I compare these two quantities supplied, it's obvious that the more inelastic has less quantity supplied. Now if I continue to make that supply curve more inelastic, almost straight up and down, the increase in quantity supply due to an increase in price becomes smaller and smaller. I'm going to redo the whole thing. I'm going to put some numbers in. There's a supply curve. And I'll put numbers in for prices and quantity. Price of 6, the quantity supplied is 5. At every price level, there's an associated quantity. If prices rise from 6 and they go up, let's say to 8, we move up the supply curve. Quantity supplied is 8. Price rises 33% and quantity goes up 60%. So quantity is growing faster than prices. In this case, price elasticity of supply is equal to 1.8. The official formula is percent change in quantity divided by percent change in price. So we have the new quantity, which is 8. And we mean that 8 right there. Minus. minus 5, which is the initial quantity, and divide all this by 5, which is the initial quantity. I have formulas for the percentage change in other videos as well. You take all this times 100, divided by 8, which is the new price, minus 6, which is the old price, divided by 6, which is the initial price. Multiplied, or times 100. This is equal to 0.6 times 100, divided by 0.33 times 100, which is equal to 60%, divided by 33%, which of course is equal to 1.8. This is the official formula for price elasticity of supply. Now I'm going to make supply more inelastic and recalculate price elasticity of supply. The price increase is exactly the same from 6 to 8. So the formula becomes 6, which is the new quantity, minus 5, which is the initial quantity, divided by 5. The percentage change in price is 8 minus 6, which is the initial price, divided by 6, the initial price. This equates to 0.20 times 100 divided by 0.33 times 100, which equates to 20% divided by 33% which is equal to 
So we did have price elasticity of supply decrease to 0 0.6. 1.8 to 0.6. So as supply becomes more inelastic, price elasticity of supply decreases. I'm sure you're wondering now, what happens if supply is inelastic, perfectly inelastic like this? I'm sure you're wondering that. Percentage change in quantity becomes 5 minus 5 divided by 5, or 0 times 100, which is a 0% increase in quantity, while the percent change in price is exactly the same. So price elasticity of supply is equal to 0. So if supply is perfectly or totally inelastic, price elasticity of supply is 0. Now I'm certain you're wondering, what happens if it's horizontal or flat like this, totally elastic? In this case, elasticity is infinite. Can't be calculated really, it's gigantic, enormous. So most supply curves are inelastic in the short run. Well, sometimes it can be totally inelastic in the short run. From a wine perspective, a supply of wine, it's totally inelastic in the short run. Even if price goes up, it's hard to produce more wine in the short run. It takes time to plant more vines, to grow those vines, so eventually supply begins to flatten out, becomes more inelastic due to time. Supply becomes more elastic as time passes because you can plant more vines, respond to increases in price, so on and so forth. Short run inelastic, long run more elastic. The official formula for price elasticity of supply. Official formula is percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price. Your textbook probably has a formula like this where it's Q2 minus Q1 where Q2 is the new quantity and Q1 is the old quantity, or the initial quantity. And we have the second price, or the new price, minus the first price divided by the first price, which is P2 minus P1 divided by P1. I wonder why this is confusing to students. And that's been price elasticity of supply. Good luck in your classes.